yeah, I'm doing great. That was just my 15th lap around this. That's, that's a lot of laps. Are, are, are you sure you're doing okay? You look like, you look a little pale. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Do you, do you think you could go get me some water or something? Yeah, I got you. Just make sure you don't throw over anything. Okay. Stay put. so scared of? Not wanting to meet your father tonight doesn't make me scared. But I don't know what it is, but it's something. I can see it when you've had a few drinks or when we're making love and you say, I love you, and damn it, you mean it. But then you'll do a thing with your eyes, a funny or fry and cut off. You order another drink over a lover and make a joke and get up the bed. Anything, you have to go out on a link for you tie a disclaimer on it and wiggle away. And it makes me feel like shit. I've got my own pace. Pace is a lot of bull. You either want me or you don't. This isn't a wise for race. You're not pacing yourself in a pack. This is you and me. I can't do this anymore. I'm tired of holding myself back. I deserve better than this. I'm smart, I'm pretty, and I'm funny. And there's a lot of guys, good men, who will be proud to have me shout that up to my father. And who will be pleased as fudge to have a key to my apartment. Yes, 
when she was late or something. The mother or the kid? Who cares? They're both gone and out of our hair. They're all gone. Thank God. You really like kids, don't you? Let's just say when it comes to Hansel and Gretel, my sympathies are with the witch. <laughs> I'm thinking, 
Forget it. I can make it through the next 10 seconds, but I do. Somehow I'll make it through the next 10 seconds, but then I have to do it all over again. All these seconds floating by. It's like I'm waiting for something bad to happen. I don't know what, a car wreck, a nuclear war, something that sounds awful. But at least I know there'll be this instant when I know I was just alive, just once.
So then, what happened? Well, we see they're being pretty slow getting out of the road. So we got to swerve a little bit to miss it. Not a lot, you know, but a little bit. This seems to make some of the guys in the back of the truck really mad. Like, somebody goes, Low first! You know? So once we pass them, on the side of the road, we see that they're, they're, a little, they're laughing. <laughs> and see, they give us the finger. You know what I mean? So now I'm thinking to myself, where did they learn to do that? I mean, that ain't some old Oriental custom. They must have learned it from one of our guys. So suddenly, some of the guys in the back of the truck, you see, they start screaming for the driver to back up. So he jams on the brakes, and in this big cloud of dust, he's grinding this thing in reverse, as if he needs to roll those kids over backwards. Now, the kids, of course, they move out of the way, but one of them, maybe two, I don't know, they, they stop to see him. They give us the finger again. And they are laughing. So um, everybody on the truck opens fire. I mean, I couldn't believe it. They're like half a platoon. They got M16s, automatic rifles. They're pouring all this firepower into these kids. And the kids, they're dead about a hundred times over. But they're still firing rounds into their bodies. Like they've gone crazy. And the bodies you see they, they get these little jumps into the air and you know, they, they they flop down again. Like rag dolls. They just uh, sort of stop and me and the guys drive away. So now I'm thinking to myself, what is going on here? I mean, this is my first day in the country, and we need to reach the combat zone. I'm thinking to myself, this is the enemy? Kids who give our truck a little jog in the road and give us the finger? I mean, come on, man! And one of the guys who sees him sort of just looking back down the road, and he gives me a little, and he says, see how he hose them all motherfuckers down? Hose them down. You like that? to me. 
I wanted to cure. It used to matter. I used to care. I mean, about people and how their bodies hurt. Then you stopped caring. Yes, I think so. They walk 10 blocks so you can be around the corner so you can buzz up and say that you don't want to have brunch with Uh, no, I told you I tried to call. Okay, he's on the line for like five minutes. Alright, I'm sorry. There's nothing to be sorry.
picture. Well, I printed out a copy of it. Reproduction, not original documentation. Stop talking, Lily. Can I show you the picture, please? I've been eating the sushi. Now you got me worth spinning out like you. You tried it? Took me a while, but yeah. You don't understand. When I ate sushi for the first time, it changed my whole head. It's so different. A product of a completely unique world view. A different approach. Not just to cooking, but eating. Not just eating, but life. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Did you like it? You know when you, you ate the sushi, and it made you think all those things? Completely unique world view. Well, it made me think too about how you Puerto Rican and you eat that nastiness. Well, I am, and I do. Well, it also made me think too about how I never even tried it. And I was convinced I didn't like it, and I tasted it, and I was kind of right. It was ass. Here I am, rambling about unique world views and international culinary paradigms, and the sushi is ass. But it was <laughs> ass in a different way than I expected. So it wasn't as bad as you thought. No, it was worse. <laughs> more different than I thought. All you have to say is you didn't like it. It didn't taste like I thought. So it could have tasted good, you know? Makes you think the stuff you knew was whack ain't really whack. At least like, like you expected it to be. And that's kind of the whole view of the world too, right? That's exactly what it is. So have you, you ever had it? it? <laughs> you go first. Have you ever heard of that thing? Only from you. And since you mentioning her, she must be a major figure in hip-hop history or some shit. She should be. You see, I got you all figured out, Lady Santiago. Reina Rey was one of the first real party DJs. Think about what that means. It's 1979 in the South Bronx, and every party you go to, boy after boy after boy, it's on the turntables. And boy after boy after boy, it's in the microphones, and it's always in English. Even when it's one of the few Puerto Rican boys and it's macho and it's gang jackets. And it's all one perspective. And then this girl shows up. This woman. And she shuts up the sexist shit talk. And she finds her way up to the tables and she grabs the mic. And she starts speaking in English and in Spanish. And everybody loves her. That changes everything. She was there at the beginning. And now no one even knows she existed. And you're gonna show me a picture of her? And... She was your mother. That's my theory. Elizabeth Reina Reyes Loyo, The South Bronx, 1977, 78, 79. Birth of hip hop. Your mom was there. At least I think she was. And if she was there, that changes the world, really. You don't want to ask how it changes the world? <coughs> if you can place a Puerto Rican woman at the dawn of hip hop's creation, not just as an observer, but as a vital participant, you change all women's entitlement to the form and you <coughs> shape the face of interracial relationships throughout the Afro Latino diaspora. <laughs> I know, I'm doing it again. I'll fix it. Okay, well, we know there were women involved back then, we know there were Puerto Ricans involved back then. We don't really know the specifics of all of their stories, but I think I know the beginning of your mom's story, and you definitely know the end. And if we put it together, we tell us entirely! <coughs> I don't know who this person is. That was not exactly the response I was expecting. Listen, I don't mean to get in the way of your essay, your school project, whatever, but you're taking up a lot of time, and I have a lot of work to do. Alejandro, no one in the neighborhood remembers your mom being around here before 1980. And Reina Rey disappears from the South Bronx in 1980. No one knows why. I think she got pregnant and started a new life here in the Lower East Side. You should probably go. Alejandro, I need you. I can't do this without you. I mean, not just because it's your mother, but I mean, I'm the suburban white girl here, right? What authority do I have to tell this story? I know this is a tough time and you're grieving and I can't even imagine what you must feel right now, but... That's right, you can. Please, just look at this picture for just one second, and there's no way you can tell me that this is not your mother. I like this place better when it was...
Sardelli. Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> 